Okay, before we get into this section, if you haven't already done so, make sure you go back and read the development of this future value formula and make sure you read especially this that shows you the difference between a future value annuity and a present value annuity because that's very important for you to understand all that before we uh, do any examples. Okay, so the first example I'm going to look at here says suppose you invest one thousand dollars per quarter this right here per quarter is what makes this an annuity now the if you read this problem and think about it just step back and think about it a minute you'll see that this thousand dollars per quarter investment is going to increase the balance and so since these payments are going to increase the balance this must be a future value annuity. So now we just need to find out, we know the payment and we're, we're actually looking for the future value. So we're going to use the future value formula. And here's the future value formula that you're given at the beginning of this section. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the information we have. We know we're going to make payments of $1,000. Okay, now next thing, let's talk about I. The annual interest rate is 0 .065, 6.5%, .5%, and M, the number of compounding periods per year, is 4. So that means that our quarterly rate, I, is going to be 0 .065 divided by 4. So notice I put in here for I, I put 0 0.065 divided by 4. Now let's talk about this N here. Okay, we know we're compounding four times a year, or and we're also making payments four times a year. So four times a year for 15 years is going to give me a total of 60 periods. So N is going to be 60. And then, of course, in the denominator, we just repeat the I that we put in the top. So the I is 0.065 over 4. Now notice when I put this in the calculator I use two parentheses on the top. I, I close the entire numerator and I also put parentheses around the 1 plus i so that it will calculate the 1 plus before it raises it to the power. On the bottom I also have to put parentheses because I actually wrote this as a quotient. If I had actually figured out what 0 0.065 divided by 4 was and then uh, just put in a single value, I wouldn't need the parentheses down here. But in this case, since I'm writing it as a fraction, I need the parentheses to be around it because otherwise it'll just divide by 0 0.065, then it'll divide that result by 4. And that's not what I want. I want it to divide 0 0.065 by 4 first, then divide that result into the numerator. So anyway, you get $100,336.68. So make sure you can get that on your calculator. Now as far as the interest is concerned, you simply just take the 100000 and subtract your total of investment, which is 60 investments of $1,000, $60,000. So just subtract $60,000 from what the investment is worth, and you'll get that that's your interest, $40,336.68. The opposite of a future value annuity is when you're solving for the payment given the future value. In that case, we call that a sinking fund. A sinking fund is when you know how much you want, but you want to know what payment will get you to your goal. So in this example, we know we want to have $12,000 in three years. Okay, and it says how much must you invest per month. Now this per month is important because that tells me it's multiple investments. So that means we have an annuity and these multiple investments are going to increase my balance. So that means we have a future value annuity. Now let's find the rest of the information. We know the rate is 6%. We know we're compounding monthly, so M is 12, and we also know the future value is $12,000. So if future value is 12,000, rate is 6%, time in years is 3 years, compounding monthly, so M is 12, 
that would mean that n is 36 because 3 years times 12 times a year would be a total of 36 periods. And then the rate per period is 0.06 divided by 12, which is 0.005. Now, in my example, I left it as 0.06 over 12, but if you wanted to, you could put 0.005 since that's the same value as 0.06 over 12. And of course, we're trying to find what payment will lead us to this $12,000. So you'll notice here, I took the, this is the formula you use for a sinking fund. This is basically the same formula as the future value formula, except it's written in terms, it's written as payment in terms of future value. Notice the fraction is flipped over from the previous formula. Okay, so I have 12,000 for my future value. I is 0 0.06 over 12 or 0 0.005. And then on the bottom, notice I use two sets of parentheses here. So I have 1 plus 0 0.06 over 12 raised to the n, which is 36, minus 1, close the parentheses, and I get 30506. Okay, so that's the payment that you're going to have to make that will grow to $12,000 over those 36 periods. Now, all you have to do to calculate how much interest is earned is take the 12,000, subtract how much you invested, which was 36 payments of 30506, and you can see how much interest you earned is $1,017.84. Okay, this one right here is just another uh, future value problem. Again, notice that you're making monthly payments, so that means it's an annuity, and since these payments are going to increase the balance, it's got to be a future value annuity. I'll let you dig through it and find all the pertinent values, but you just need to find the future value of this account, so that would be $500 payment. I is 0 0.08 over 12. Make sure you don't try to reduce that. So you would have on top, you would have 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12 raised to the 360 minus 1. Notice the parentheses enclosing the top. And then over I, so the bottom would be 0 0.08 over 12 enclosed in parentheses. And I find that that investment is going to be worth at the end of those 30 years is going to be worth over $740,000. And of course you can calculate the interest down here. Now, if you wanted, if you said to yourself, well I want to have a million dollars instead of $750,000, you could do the same problem and then you could figure out what payment you would need in order to have a million dollars. But then you would go to the sinking fund formula and you would plug in a million dollars for the future value, I is still 0.08 over 12, so the top would be 0.08 over 12, and the bottom would be 1 plus 0.08 over 12 raised to the 360 minus 1, and you'll see it's 670.98. So you'd have to put in about $171 a month to get a million dollars as opposed to $745,000. I'm not going to go over number four because it's basically the same as a couple more I did. Basically it's just a future value problem. Uh, the first one is a future value problem where n is 20 because it's uh, quarterly for uh, five years. And then in the second problem n is 44 because you're compounding quarterly, you're making quarterly payments over an 11 year period. So 11 times 4 is 44, but the rest of it is pretty straightforward. Now some of these problems where you're solving for time or rate, I realize you can probably do trial and error, but let's try to solve them mathematically. It says how long will it take for monthly payments, so that means we have an annuity, of 500 to have a future value of $100,000. Well, since the 500 is going to increase the balance, these $500 payments are going to increase the balance we have a future value annuity. And then we know money earns 6% compounded monthly. Well, I'm just going to take the future value formula that we had from earlier, and I'm going to plug in the information that I have. So here's your future value formula. If you need to, go back and review it. I put in 100000 for future value. I put in $500 for payment. For I, I put in 0 0.06 over 12, or you can put 0 0.005 there. N is the unknown, because we want to know how many payments we must make. And then minus 1, all over 0 0.06 over 12, all over I. 
So now, I'm going to divide both sides by 500 to get rid of this 500. That's going to give me 200 on the left. Now, since I went ahead and changed this to 0.005, if I multiply both sides of this equation by 0.005, that will cancel the 0.005. And then 200 times 0.005 is 1. So now I'm just left with the numerator. 1 plus 0.005 to the n, which is the same as 1.005 to the n uh, minus 1. Now, so I have 1 over here. I have 1.005 to the n minus 1 over here. If I add 1 to both sides of this, it will cancel the minus 1, and 1 plus 1 would give me 2. And then I can take logs of both sides, so take the natural log of both sides, and then use the log property to rewrite the right-hand side as n times the natural log of 1.005, and then divide both sides by the natural log of 1.005, and I get n equals 139 months. So remember, if it comes out to 138 point anything, you've got to write your answer as the next higher period. So I'll have to make 139 payments of uh, $500 in order to have $100,000 um, at this interest rate. I'm going to show you one more problem that you can do and that's when you're solving for the rate or the, the either rate, the annual rate or the periodic rate in an annuity. Uh, let's take a look at this. Mr. Ray has deposited $150 per month into an ordinary annuity. After 14 years, the annuity is worth $85,000. What annual rate, compounded monthly, has this annuity earned during the 14-year period? So we know we're looking for R, but we can solve for I or R here, and then we can, we can still get the other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for I here, and then I'm going to convert it, uh, convert it to R. So we know that since we're doing this 150 per month, it, since it's per month, it's an annuity and it's a future value annuity. Okay, so I put in the 85,000 for future value. I put in the payment, which is 150. Then I divide both sides by 150 so that I can just get a constant over here, 566.67. Now notice over here, I changed I to X. Now, you might want to Google on a calculator how to graph on your calculator. But let me show you what I did. This expression is too complicated to solve for x algebraically. So what I did is I graphed the left-hand side. I, I'm going to graph the left-hand side, which is, let's say, I guess I didn't do that. But if you graph the left-hand side, you'll actually get a horizontal line. That's supposed to be a horizontal line. And then if you graph the right-hand side, it should intersect that line at a point here. And when I found the intersection of this line on the calculator, I found that it was 0 0.01253. But that's the, um, that's actually not the uh, annual rate, that's the periodic rate. So, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, it is. It is the annual rate because we're compounding annually. Let's see. What is that? What annual rate compounded monthly is this annuity earned during the 12 year period? Uh, no, I'm sorry. That should be multiplied by 12. Okay, I got a little confused there, but let me clear this up. This actually is compounded monthly. So when you get this rate, this is the monthly rate because we solve for I, which would be the rate per period. So to actually, we really need to convert that. So what I said here is, is, not, is not true. We really need to convert that to the annual rate by multiplying it by 12. So if you take that and multiply it by 12, I got on my calculator 0 0.15036. Well, as a percent, that's 15.04 percent. So that's how you um, solve that. There's another way to do it. You, you don't have to actually divide both sides by 150, but I'll let you read that. And then the rest of the examples you can read on your own. Have a good day.